Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to be talking about two distinct different topics. The first topic is related to prices of products and actually some good news on the horizon. So we're going to be talking about that first. And second, we're going to talk about the most important thing that anyone can do to increase their ability to survive in a disaster or an emergency situation, but it's something nobody cares about. So. <laughs> Because nobody cares about we're going to talk about that second. First, what we're going to talk about is prices, because that's something that everybody cares about. If you've been alive during the past couple of years, you know that a lot of prices of different products have been going up and up and up, specifically food and energy, all that kind of stuff is really starting to skyrocket. But it's always been my feeling that if we saw that, we were going to see some companion drops in prices of different types of things because as the prices of necessities go up, people have limited ability to buy other things and when demand for something goes down, usually the prices for that go down as well. And I've actually started to see that and I wanted to let you guys know to start looking out for price drops for discretionary items. Uh, those are things that you don't necessarily need in your life, things like... Uh, you know, a video game system or something like that. Although video game systems get a little bit uh, tricky because you know there's the, the, the chip shortage and all that kind of stuff. But anything that you might want, not things that you need, but things that you might want, you might start seeing some price reductions. Uh, what I can say from my own personal experience is that I've been eyeball I've been eyeballing a new uh, dehumidifier. I wanted to get a backup dehumidifier for the house. I've been just kind of keeping my eye on one for a while, and I was just recently able to get one for about 20% less than the last time I bought a uh, dehumidifier. It was a 20% cost reduction. I guess this is seen by a lot of people as something, you know, you got to eat, you got to have a place to live, you got to have, you know, fuel for your car, but, you know, maybe buying a dehumidifier for this year, for this year can wait until next year. People are kind of pushing uh, expenditures like that, uh, you know, off into the future, and stores that have this stuff, uh, you know, it's holding up space in their warehouse and they want to move the stuff out, they're starting to reduce prices. So if there's anything that you're interested in getting that's a non-essential kind of item, like, you know, again, any kind of discretionary stuff, uh, you know, fun stuff, I know, I know it's not a real topic that you hear a lot in prepping videos, uh, you know, talking about like, you know, get a new video game system. But the reality is if you're really into prepping, what you're into is trying to uh, take advantage of opportunities as they arrive and be ready when opportunities kind of dry up. And this is one of those situations where some opportunities might be opening and if you've had the foresight to think ahead and maybe put something aside for when prices were coming down, you might start to see that at this point that some of those things are going to start becoming cheaper and you're going to be able to get more with your buck. So I want to let share that with you guys. Now, second part of this video is talking about the most important thing that you can do as a prepper to try to increase your chance of surviving in a, you know, extreme and emergency event. And it's something that nobody really tends to want to do because they say they either can't do it or it's too difficult or it's too boring. And those three things alone just make it so nobody cares about it. And it relates to the video series that I've had here on my channel about building your own homestead. As a prepper, there's nothing that you can do that puts you in a better position for surviving and then you know, moving out to a rural environment where you have more access to land, more access to resources, uh, you know, a little bit more padding between you and your neighbors and the golden hordes as, they, as they're called, and uh, you know, creating kind of like a homestead environment for yourself. Uh, there's nothing more potent that you can do for yourself. It's difficult, it takes time to put it together, it does take some resources and money, uh, you know, to buy materials and whatnot. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's fairly dull and it's not exciting. It's not the kind of thing where it's just like, there's a link down in the description below. Click that link, you bring you to Amazon and 10 minutes later and $20 poorer, you're gonna, you're gonna have the ultimate survival knife. And then it's like, all your problems are gone. It's not easy like that. It's something you have to put work into and you gotta put time into. And I've created a whole video series here on my channel. Here is a link to the video series. And this link and others like it in other videos are gonna be the only way that you're gonna be able to find out about what's new on that series. What I've decided to do, uh, per the wise advice of Canadian Prepper and many, many others, uh, people have been suggesting to me, uh, accurately it would seem, that uh, my channel has been being killed by my channel killing, <laughs> uh, other people's phrase, not mine, although I agree with it, my channel killing series about building your own homestead. Uh, essentially, if I am putting videos out on this channel that almost nobody watches, and the number of people that watch the homestead uh, building series is like, somewhere between 100 and 200 people. Uh, every single time I put one of those videos out on YouTube and YouTube sees that nobody wants to see it, it almost acts like kind of like a strike against the channel and then other videos that I'm putting out on my uh, 
channel here. Uh, YouTube just assumes, ah, it's more of that garbage that nobody wants to see. It doesn't matter how important it is. It doesn't matter how relevant it is. It doesn't matter that, uh, you know, the reason that a lot of people aren't watching the videos is just because, you know, it's not easy. It's not exciting. It's, uh, you know, something you have to put work into. Uh, the, at the end of the day, what it does is it, it kills the channel for me to constantly be releasing these videos about the homestead. But I'm not going to stop making the videos. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be releasing the videos as unlisted videos. Uh, that means that they don't get scanned as a public video for YouTube, but they are available to you guys. So if you go to the playlist for the homestead building series, and it's down in the description of this video, if you go to that, you will be able to check and see if there are updates on what I've been doing here. And I can't stress enough that doing something like this is absolutely I think I, I think it is absolutely the most important thing that you could possibly do if you want to increase increase your chances of surviving in a you know a, a true SHTF sort of global situation now I, I know a lot of people don't like to hear that a lot of people want to feel like uh, I want to keep my involvement in this life-saving uh, activity very minimal <laughs> okay well you get where i'm going with this most people don't like change and they don't want to initiate changes in their life they like the way that their life is and i get that if, as preppers that's kind of the name of our game is that like life is really nice now things are i i know it's not great for everybody but you know compared to how it could be you know compared to like the middle ages things are pretty darn decent at the moment and a lot of us are concerned with the idea that things could be heading in a backward uh, in a backwards sort of direction in the future and the whole idea of prepping is like appreciating the way that you have your life now and wanting to kind of hold on to that and preserve that so i get the idea of not wanting to initiate changes in your life but the changes that we talk about in the homestead building series are the kind of changes that um you can make by choice now and you have more options open to you or you can be forced to make changes later and you have you know more doors are closed to you so I can't highly stress and recommend enough, whether you watch my series about building your own homestead or you watch someone else's series about building a homestead, though I can guarantee I've never seen a series that is as in-depth and uh, voluminous and boring as my series is. I know there's a lot of other materials out there. You know, whatever you can do to kind of inspire you to you know, make some changes in your life that are going to have profound impacts in on your life you know if we get into a situation where the world really does make a, a major change you know you think about natural disasters and events like that and they're always worse when people are densely concentrated into like a tight urban environment and yeah you know, that's just life i mean that just seems to be like a, a rule of life when when you know things get screwy and there's like a curveball and like resources become scarce in places that are densely packed and populated those are the places that suffer from it the most you know i didn't choose that the world is this way but it seems to be this way so you know one way of protecting yourself from that kind of situation is to kind of get out get into a place where you have more room more space more control over your life and uh, and then take advantage of that you know i there's something to be said for living in cities and, and densely populated urban environments. I love going to all the sorts of different uh, restaurants, especially like different uh, ethnic types of restaurants. I love Indian restaurants. I love Ethiopian restaurants. I love Chinese restaurants, Japanese restaurants. I love all different types of di uh, you know uh, different restaurants with food from all over the world. I live out in the middle of the sticks, and it's like a half an hour just to get to any restaurant. And, you, you know... There's not a lot, a lot of really great options. You know, I'll grant that. Uh, the flip side of that is that I save a lot of money by not going out to restaurants because there's just, you know, with less uh, options, there's less temptation, I suppose. But, you know, yeah, there's a, there's a trade-off between, uh, you know, the things that you have access to in a city. There's just, there's more people. Uh, there's more to do. There's more art. There's more culture. There's, um, you know, there, there's more of all that. But there's also more pollution. There's more noise. There's more, uh, you know, violence and, and things like that. So, you know, it's really, it's really a trade-off one way or the other. So, long story short, and on my channel, it's always a long story. If you want to continue uh, following my progress with continuing to build this homestead, we've put in a lot of work in it already. We're already at like day 970 in the series, uh, but there's a lot more to left to do. We're still working with the chickens. We're trying to get the chickens nailed down, not uh, figuratively, not, not literally, I'm not crucifying chickens out here. Uh, though in the country, you know, there wouldn't be anyone to complain about it other than myself and my conscience. I'd never do that. Uh, you know, we are still working on finishing up the fallout shelter. Uh, 
in the future, I'm planning on building a submerged uh, greenhouse that is a partially bermed greenhouse. Uh, it's a Peruvian kind of thing. I forget, I always forget the Peruvian name for it, but it was something that was used by um, the native people, I believe, although I'm not sure how they did greenhouses without glazing. That's a story anyway, though. It's like Peruvian Native Americans developed this thing. Anyway, it's a submerged greenhouse. That's something that we're going to be uh, experimenting with. We're opening up more land. We're, we, you know, we're, we still have so much more to do here. But um, if it's killing the channel and the channel's just not getting out to people, um, you know, what good does it do to you know, put these videos out and make them public to everyone, but none of the public wants to see them? So for you guys that are interested in watching these videos, they're still going to be continu continued to be made. They're still going to be available to you. But the only way that you're going to get to see them is to go to the playlist of the series down in the description below. You can check it out that way. And, um, you know, that's how I'm going to go forward, at least for the time being, because, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the channel was just getting butchered by the fact that I was releasing all these videos that ain't nobody want to see because they uh, demand an investment of people's time uh, for something that, while very important, wasn't very important to a lot of people. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.